session today. Uh, I represent the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, but also a festival dedicated to urban planning, city and um, communities in Warsaw. The title of this festival you see on my first slide. Let me uh, give you um, a slideshow. And uh, the, the festival has such a, hmm, let's say, simple and a little bit propagandistic title, Warsaw Under Construction. It is similar to slogans from the um, communist, communism, uh, People's Republic time. But uh, in this festival, we are discussing Warsaw today. Warsaw today, but of course with some um, historical footnotes or uh, traditions. Uh, Warsaw is um, an exceptional example uh, among Central European cities. Uh, the city has witnessed unparalleled changes, both historically and in the past two decades. Uh, swept off map uh, during World War II, the city was both uh, reinvented and reconstructed, uh, reconstructed uh, during communist times and is now undergoing unmatched growth. Um, importantly, uh, this unparalleled, unparalleled change is also perceived as such in Warsaw, um, very often Warsaw is um, um, called uh, as a city of chaos. As Joanna, Joanna Kusiak uh, wrote a book um, uh, um, about uh, this problem, chaos, chaos in Warsaw. However, I will try to present this uh, chaos as um, a kind of potential um, of today's uh, Warsaw. As Monika Konrad, our head of urban planning, um, said, um, I quote, achieving local convenience in a contemporary city is becoming a synonym for the high quality of life of urbanities, especially in cities with complex polycentric structure uh, like Warsaw. Uh, and of course, at the moment, we are discussing uh, this polycentric model for Warsaw, in which um, few districts could coexist and offer something slightly different for the urban inhabitant, while also functioning as a self-contained city uh, within a city. Uh, this district, uh, are or could be built around well-planned transit infrastructure. Uh, some of them um, already exist. We, uh, we are mapping them, but um, also they need, of course, well-connected public spaces, mixed-use developments for work, housing, leisure. And uh, Monika, in her last lecture here, um, proposed such a um, term or concept which is discussed um, also in many many fields of urban uh, debate at the moment um, urban resilience uh, such an ability um, of an urban system and all its constituents um, to maintain or rapidly uh, return um, to um, desired functions uh, in the face of a uh, disturbance. Um, the city should uh, be able to adopt uh, to change, but uh, also um, quickly um, transformed um, to have such a, uh, such a possibility um, of a quickly uh, transformation to transform its system uh, um, that limit current uh, um, uh, its current uh, shape and um, be adaptable. 
and uh, I will draw I, I will draw a picture of of uh, possible parts of Warsaw or uh, potentials centers or uh, puzzles uh, of such uh, of, for such a model. Uh, I will give some footnotes. My presentation will be based more on photos than, than um, mainly on photos than uh, planning or, uh, or um, urban uh, materials. Um, urban theorist Joanna Kusiak warned us against the common trap um, that, that very often happens um, during in studying uh, such post-socialist cities uh, like Warsaw, post-socialist city uh, is being overly orientalized as radically different and yet at the same time very uh, this very difference is interpreted as mere uh, backwardness within the western paradigm paradigm of urban modernization um, interestingly researchers often uh, subsequently move move on to interrogate this questionable paradigm through post-colonial post -colonial approach. In this way, I will try to overcome traditional post-socialist perceptions and on, on Cold War dichotomies and re replace them with uh, attempts to do uh, justice, to do uh, interviewing of pre-socialism, socialism and post-socialism, like Joanna Kusiak did in her text to face these uh, dichotomies of post-socialist analysis. Mm. I will try to focus also on uh, the extent of diversity among post-socialist cities um, and on their continuity, discontinuity uh, with the past. And the first thing I would like to let's say, uh, present or discuss here is the tradition of um, reconstruction of Warsaw, post-war reconstruction of Warsaw, as seen as possible uh, potential. Um, Warsaw was an epicenter of many modes of urbanism. Um, we had Tsarist urban planning, modernist socialist uh, in the past two decades also uh, aggressively uh, neoliberal mm, but uh, the uh, the reconstruction of warsaw is um, something unusual something um, which 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 is shaping this city um, even nowadays uh, this reconstruction that began 75 years ago was a result of discussions about how to um, how and where to live in this ruined city and this debate engaged urban planners architects um, citizens journalists writers also of course uh, you see here photos from the first uh, months after, after the war, Second World War. Uh, and of course, this socialist plan for the city was modernist, like uh, in um, many uh, European and world cities uh, in that time. Um, and um, it was modernist, modernist in its attitudes uh, towards light um, and space typologies planning and also social program finally uh, the poss possibilities of logical development were prioritized in this reconstruction this idea stood in a, in a contrast with the overpopulation um, of the central parts of the of this of the pre-war city, uh, pre-war Warsaw was overpopulated, but the planners from uh, the Warsaw Reconstruction Office managed to work 
work out an idea of the city that not only performs central administrative functions, but has successfully regained its residents um, and um, had new um, architectural phase and become for example a truly green city finally i'm showing brick layers but <laughs> but believe me that uh, there were also many uh, parks open spaces um, courtyards or passages and beautiful streets uh, which were designed in this post-war um, uh, reconstruction uh, process. Uh, the triumphs of uh, reconstruction include uh, the, the, the elimination of a historical historic district, preservation of um, Warsaw escarpment, for example, as such a green uh, stripe, um, green heart of the city, uh, providing also residents with the inflow of fresh air, uh, with uh, um, ventilation corridors, as well as indicating state administration, higher education, rail transport areas. Um, and we have been using uh, public and open spaces um, as I mentioned, shaped at the time to this very day. You see one uh, centrally located square, which is on the photo, you see it as a storage for bricks and later designed in the, uh, in the reconstruction, but um, also uh, having uh, um, some uh, potential uh, nowadays. The contribution of uh, the reconstruction uh, to the present shape of Warsaw is often ignored understanding of this process can galvanize positive change and stimulate comprehensive thinking about the future of, uh, of the city of Warsaw. After all, uh, the city's uh, contemporary urban tissue and spatial order um, was uh, defined uh, as a result of, of decisions uh, made, made 75 years ago when um, when raising Warsaw from ruins began. Uh, public spaces are especially, I think, um, spectacular. You see here um, kind of courtyard or even I would say square um, in between uh, housing uh, of Marienstadt. But uh, public spaces created uh, in the reconstruction of Warsaw, you see here uh, the central part of uh, Royal Route, Royal, uh, Spa uh, Royal uh, Square, um, the central part of historical district. These public spaces are uh, very important now at the moment where uh, hundreds, thousands uh, women uh, are protesting uh, on the streets uh, in many cities um, of Poland. This um, one of the first uh, protests was uh, uh, took place in 2018. At the moment, it is um, a very important movement, but um, but uh, this um, reconstructed city and uh, squares become streets and um, uh, and uh, public spaces become, um, let's say, as a very important potential for these new um, movements, for these new um, commons. You see here these uh, Warsaw uh, squares, which were uh, research, 
uh, and mapped by uh, Fundacja Puszka and Ben Zmiana in a very, I would say, artistic way, without maybe urban context. You see here their shapes, but these shapes are um, important to say that um, they are to, to mark also that they are accidental, that uh, um, these squares, these public spaces in Warsaw uh, were um, shaped in, in their historical, um, um, let's say, um, in, in their historical forms during the re reconstruction of Warsaw. They are different, they are they are accidental, they are uh, not planned very often, uh, but they are very interesting and they are also an important potential for, for, the, for the future. Another, and, uh -huh, and, you, and you see here also the, the web page you can visit later, Place Warszawy, uh, Maybe it is, it is, uh, I, I think that this website is only um, in Polish, but it's, a, let's say, um, storage uh, a web where you can find many um, drawings, uh, researches and photos from the, from the squares in Warsaw. There is mapping of the squares, but also, um, uh, some some texts and um, and interesting materials. Another simple but important thing uh, I would like to add to to these footnotes on Warsaw, on Warsaw potential and on um, future developments of uh, local centers are markets, bazaars, which are I would say very uh, vivid and important part of uh, everyday life of uh, Varsovians. Uh, Warsaw's local bazaars are without doubt the best post-Cold War phenomenon to re-evaluate re re the post-socialist paradigm. The bazaar can also be read through many other uh, spectacles we see um, on, it also narrates the impact of global economy, migrant cultures uh, in, in uh, such city like Warsaw, and uh, both sellers and sold goods um, are very often from different East, Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Russia, Asia. We have a huge uh, Vietnamese minority in Warsaw as well. Um, so the bazaar introduced um, Warsaw to um, alternative consumer practices, but I, I'm also recalling it as a um, huge potential for creating uh, possible future local centers, because uh, on this photo you see the main uh, Hala Miroska, the main uh, bazaar in the, centrally located in, in, in the center of Warsaw, but um, small bazaars are of course scattered uh, in, in all the districts and, and um, also um, smaller um, housing estates even. Uh, bazaar also Mm, the, the important fact, function is that um, Bazaar is connecting Warsaw to ethnic others, um, which was a major change in the city that still has very limited uh, non-Polish communities. I, I, uh, I uh, said something about Vietnam is, of course, there is also huge Ukrainian uh, community. Um, and uh, I think that that this, these uh, places are very democratic and we need bazaars in the future development of our city. Uh, we need to maybe even create new ones to, um, to um, um, redesign some or 
uh, save some of them. Another important potential of our city is um, historical architecture, but I will focus, Warsaw is um, very much about architecture. Warsaw has a lot of good housing, a lot, a lot of uh, well-designed housing estates. You see here such a cover. I found it uh, in one show uh, curated by David Crowley on Cold War and um, architecture design um, and this, this cover of Architectura from 1957 is showing abstract art and uh, mm, huge um, mm, prefabricated slabs um, in the same, on the same uh, collage, on the same uh, picture. Um, of course, um, among uh, uh, seven million apartments uh, uh, designed and built in the communist times in Poland. Uh, many of them had low quality, but Warsaw has this, let's say, privilege that there were also many experimental uh, housing estates, which are possible future uh, local centers some of them have many uh, interesting pavilions and uh, infrastructure around uh, also a lot of a lot of greenery i'm presenting here uh, zofia and oscar hansen uh, satellite uh, housing estate przyczółek grochowski uh, and of course, I'm recalling it because satellites and such housing estates are, uh, are super important in the, uh, our process of discussing and designing new um, local centers. Um, Zofia and Oscar Hansen say uh, in their writings that there is a strict conformity, strict conformity between space and the social system. Even after the end of socialism, they argued that socialist Poland had offered opportunities for original solutions based on holistic thinking, uh, which were impossible after Poland's return to Fed peripheral capitalism after 1989. And I think, I think that the process we are starting at the moment in Warsaw, which is uh, uh, going on in uh, Pracownia Warszawy, in the architectural office as well, this is a new holistic we thinking um, based also on these uh, historical uh, experiences. Uh, Hansen's, uh, Zofia and Oscar Hansen, they propose linear continuous system. It was a model for the urbanization of socialist Poland by means of large settlement uh, bands stretching through the whole country. But Hansen's realized only one housing estate in Warsaw. Um, and what is interesting uh, that that um, uh, that socialist state what was also um, the object of that project. Uh, in other words, Hansen's architecture was not simply instrumental in the modernization process um, as determined by regime, but it was also conceptualized as a contribution to debates about the direction that modernization should take, and this might be fruitful today, nowadays. Hansen aimed at rethinking the state and forms of statecraft as the subject of an architectural project. It was not a utopia, uh, utopia in the service of the regime, but the state 
needed to be radically transformed in order to execute such a project. <laughs> so we could maybe ask today if our cities as organizations should be uh, transformed to execute new urban uh, way of thinking. But I wanted to say that the project of socialist housing offered uh, in Warsaw an alternative redistribution of times and places for, for everyday life. I'm showing here Sade Żoliborski, of course, very present also in socialist propaganda of the time, but uh, um, also good housing. And the author, Halina Skibnieska, um, apartments in, in Sady Żoliborskie. And also as program um, and um, I will um, now propose you a pandemic escape to the country uh, in Warsaw. S some of the uh, some of the um, housing estates from socialist time are full of greenery. We are here uh, in Ursynów. Um, there are many hills and beautiful uh, greenery ara around. I see here among uh, our um, audience Agnieszka Dragon, who is uh, uh, green activist uh, and uh, working on um, allotments in, in Warsaw, which are also a huge potential of our city. But I would love to um, escape not to the greenery in housing estate, but to the urban sprawl in Warsaw. Uh, urban sprawl, which can be, as it is not very big and not um, so dramatic like in many American or Asian cities, uh, this uh, minimal urban sprawl in Warsaw can be seen also as a future potential and should be an um, object and subject of of um, future uh, future projects, future designs. And urban sprawl is a, a common global phenomenon, but it seems also rooted in the post Cold War Cold War transformation process in in Warsaw. More generally, many East, Central, Eastern, uh, 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 Central European cities um, carry the after effects of long traditions of under urbanization, which historically has connected cities much more strongly to the non urban environment. So here, for example, you see new development built uh, in the middle of nowhere, we, we could say, but on the other hand, it's uh, uh, a place um, uh, connected with uh, nature, uh, but with lack of uh, infrastructure. You see here um, um, the uh, single ho houses and um, I would say the city, the, the centrally located district, which are black and uh, um, orange and um, orange, um, you see the, the um, let's say our garden cities, um, our uh, single family uh, houses uh, and um, um, directions of urban sprawl like uh, Białowęka, for example. Wawenka district. Another uh, huge potential and uh, interesting subject, the last one also I wanted to present today is the river. 
I'm showing here materials from uh, the web page of Centrala Studio, uh, Warsaw Base Studio. They uh, are researching Vistula and wetlands of Warsaw as a potential uh, for the whole city. Uh, the Vistula is a very interesting and partly wild river. It consists of an entire network of uh, water, water courses, uh, reservoirs and wetlands. Um, it, uh, it has many, uh, many uh, complicated um, um, channels, small um, uh, rivers uh, around. Um, it is not a simple line on the map. Centrala Studio propose uh, to look at Vistula's presence in Warsaw anew, to take into consideration its uh, entire hydrographic system. I quote Gosia Kuciewicz and Simone de Jacobis, architects from Centrala, we aim to create a new park of island transitions transformed be annually according to the rhythm of floods and uh, floods and uh, sculpted by the sediment carried by the current. Beyond the embankments, the new water allotments, drifting flower beds, and the millennium hydrotail will com complement the old Vistula riverbed. The new natural swimming ponds. Um, new uh, plantations and water transport connections will facilitate safe ways to take advantage of the rivers, uh, riverside. The wetscape will adapt to the natural periods of, um, of abundance of water and mitigate the weather extremes. During, uh, during droughts, it will distribute the necessary amount of water and during heavy rainfall, it will slow down and retain the stormwater runoff, forming accordingly to the river periodical surges. The uh, flood plains will restore the pools of the river of to Warsaw, allowing the city's nature to run wild again is the response to the future challenges of the climate change. I'm supporting a lot uh, this project. You see here such a visualization, which is um, connecting several uh, small um, channels and um, um, water uh, ponds, parks, uh, greeneries, allotments, uh, meadows, uh, wetlands. Um, I think it is a huge um, in, and very interesting um, uh, project, which can be, um, which can inspire us in our thinking on future local centers. I'm supporting it also as a rower. You see here me on a boat. I'm rowing, and it's the center. It's a, it's the, 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 this picture is taken in a very center of Warsaw. So in the morning before, uh, before work, um, it is possible to have such, uh, um, such uh, nice time in the, in the very center of the city and such views. So this is another huge potential, our wild, wild river. You see here also new uh, projects, new developments for bikers and, and pedestrians. The bridge for bikers and pedestrians, which is a kind of manifesto of new um, urban planners, architects, city architect, um, the president, the, 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 the city mayor also of Warsaw um, to, to tell us uh, something uh, different about uh, Warsaw, that Warsaw is the city for pedestrians as well, the city which is not only dedicated to um, 
car uh, to the to the previous uh, modernist um, um, uh, traffic and you huge uh, streets huge avenues and highways um, we have also many critical um let's say uh, events and um gatherings um, exhibitions which are important to to be mentioned here i'm here as a curator of warsaw under construction festival you see here our um, one of our exhibition uh, on housing but this is also we are also with we are also let's say potentially uh, interested in collaborating um, in, in on the project um, about uh, uh, local local centers so the critics curators people activists um, working on um, on um, critical debate uh, on the city and uh, I was trying uh, to also find uh, to 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 also to to end my to finish my my uh, talk. Uh, I was uh, uh, searching for a book or something I would like to um, quote or what would be relevant to what I'm thinking now in this a difficult pandemic time and I found on my shelf this book New Commons for Europe by Flavien Menu and it seems to be uh, difficult to have something in common with others today in this difficult pandemic uh, um, time but um, I think that we should try <laughs> we should we should um, group into collectives. Uh, I like these interviews uh, um, from 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 that book, from this book, uh, interviews with groups of young uh, architects and activists from many uh, European uh, cities, and I see it also as a potential um, in the growing privatization of uh, urban spaces uh, and privatization of all aspects of everyday life in our cities uh, transformation of all activities into commodities mm, we need uh, such collectives of of uh, architects working on different narratives uh, thank you very much I will I will stop sharing my screen and will uh, answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, very much for your presentation. So yes, now we can ask the questions. Uh, so guys, you can text to the chat or even turn on your mic and ask directly Thomas your question. Okay, while our audience um, is uh, thinking about the question, I will start with mine. And I would love to ask you, what does policentricity mean nowadays in the transformation of post-socialistic states, uh, of course, in Poland context? Mm -hmm. I think that it sounds like a completely uh, new idea. Of course, our city is working, our city architects, city planners are working uh, on this subject uh, longer. They are conscious. We have new generations of planners uh, which have also um, experience of city activism. Uh, of um, also sometimes even street working <laughs> but uh, so they are different it's a new generation uh, I would say that um, it's such a um, conscious conscious planning but um, um, in the scale of our country it's something completely new uh, there are 
very popular such um, concrete, we would say, I know that in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Ukrainian cities, you use very often such a, uh, such a term like Euro uh, renovation, this kind of Euro remont. So we have it in many cities, many public spaces in, in, uh, in, yeah, in hundreds, I would say even, uh, cities in Poland where uh, the, the auto authorities um, buy um, Chinese stone and they are um, renovating uh, one main square and that's all. There are a few trees and a lot of stone. But yeah, so this is, so this polycentrity as kind of thinking, new thinking on um, also commons, on uh, social structure, on a uh, new way of researching uh, cities is, something completely i would say it's it's a new way for new new way of thinking um, uh, on 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 our development of, of and also what is also maybe important and i was not um, how to say i was not presenting warsaw in a very um how to say uh, uh detailed way it was rather uh, a, a very poetic presentation. Um, Warsaw is very different in there are many uh, scattered small centers and all the squares I, I shown you, all the squares are centrally located. So many uh, um, suburbs or uh, um, these sprawls, they have no, no squares or even no proper public spaces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, we have the same situation in Kyiv, for example, Ukraine. So, and when you present, especially your example uh, of your presentation, I also mentioned that we have some similar problems and potential, I would say, in our country as well. Okay, we got some questions. Yeah. Could you please speak a little bit more about the initiatives projects centered around the river and water related interactions. Mm -hmm. There are, um, river became very popular, I don't know, 10 years ago, uh, when uh, one uh, architect working for the city, Marek Pivowarski, decided to uh, work on uh, the wild um, part of, uh, of the river and to um, design a path or re re renovate uh, existing path uh, for sports, for jogging. And uh, he also designed some, some uh, beaches with sand and and some some kiosks and uh, and um, even pavilions later. So uh, the river is very popular at the moment. It is um, um, a very popular, let's say, destination or a public open air uh, in uh, the summertime. Um, and there are many, I would say small organizations, um, I don't know, sports club, active, city activists also who are um, interested in, in uh, the river. For example, Miasto is Nasze, uh, um, who is working, I know that they are working on the river programs at the moment. Uh, Zakole, Agnieszka sent also Zakole as an interesting project, which is also what is important in Warsaw that we have this local governments. Warsaw is Warsaw has district, and every district has very often um, its vision, it, its local government. So um, very often we need 
to um, discuss something with with local local uh, local governments. Um, so Zakole, but uh, also Jelnica Wisła as a city, uh, as a kind of uh, project department of the city dedicated to the to the uh, uh, water to to Vistula. Uh, what else? My institution is also uh, located on uh, on Vistula River, so we have cultural. Um, mm, cultural uh, bunch of a few institutions, Fine Arts Academy, New Building uh, on the riverbank, uh, Copernicus Center uh, built uh, 20 years ago on, uh, on the riverbank. My museum has also contem a temporary pavilion on the river and uh, the university library. So there are many, many uh, activities and investments um, but it is it it looks like uh, the most one of the most successful and also coherent policy run by the city uh, introduced by the city um, more than two decades ago yeah that's very important to get some support from the governments and yeah and yeah. potential yeah so any other question you can turn on your mic and ask directly <laughs> so don't be shy yeah okay the god the police and yeah. british showed itself during protest mobilization i think so yeah 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 i think so because the protests were also organized sometimes, uh, for example, in my district, in Praga Północ, um, in the center of, the, of this district. The center, the, the psychological center of this district is Dworzec Wileński, the railway station, supermarket, like the shopping mall, and um, what, what else? Uh, post office is there also and Orthodox Church, but so this place was uh, immediately a central point of blockade in one protest. I was really, uh, yeah, astonished. It, it, it was, uh, so there were such decisions made by activists. Rondo Washingtona, uh, Warszawa Wileńska, such places where, where um, the, the protests were popping up in such such places. It will be used for sure in the in the research on on, <laughs> on local centers. This this experience of protests. Okay, I think we have more time for more questions. So, guys, go ahead. Okay, it seems we're done with questions. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Thomas, yeah, for your input and your presentation. Yeah, hope we see each other offline in Kiev and on our festival and program. So, thank you very much <laughs> for everybody for participation. Yeah, and we're happy to see you in the next. Oh, we got one more question, huh? Uh, uh, yes. Interesting examples of projects that deal with post totalitarian heritage. Interesting. Mm. Post totalitarian, which means, for example, mm -hmm. um, post totalitarian, I would say, with modernism, even because some of modern ideas were were like this of course there were exhibitions exhibition many exhibitions about uh, uh, or even seven books on the palace of culture and science the stalinist building in the center of war so many artistic projects uh, mm, 
but uh, I would mention, for example, uh, the film by Yael Bartana, uh, organized and uh, like uh, the, the, the set was uh, organized on the stadium, huge stadium. Um, there were projects or urban planning um, on um, um, on Nazi urban planning also, uh, Alexandra Polisiewicz, Aleka Polis, you can easily, I will write it on chat. Aleksandra Polisiewicz and her project Wartopia. If you, I have her contact, if you need, if you would uh, love to like to contact her. Alexandra Polisiewicz in her project was describing such a dystopian way of designing uh, authoritarian social realism on, or, um, or Nazi architecture uh, and huge uh, scale um, developments, huge uh, housing estates, huge uh, avenues or uh, streets, um, plans. This was something, it was, the project was similar to video game. It had very poor graphic design, but it was something similar to, to the early, uh, early video games, like in an, in its artistic spirit. Sounds very interesting. Okay. So, any last question? <laughs> Once again. Thank, Thank you, Julia. You, <laughs> I think no. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Tomasz. Thank you, guys, for joining us. And see you for the next public talk, Connection School. Mm -hmm. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.